Today, President Joe Biden has dropped out of the 2024 presidential race. Some of you might think that's good. Some of you might think it's bad. Others might wholly believe that it was a foregone conclusion. For us, it might symbolize the opening of some sort of proverbial door. Sadly, however, we were born literally two weeks too late and will not be able to run for president this election due to our age. However, there is always next term. And on that note, we'd like to make it clear to everyone that we're throwing our hat into the ring for the next presidential election in 2028. It might seem a bit premature, but we personally believe in getting to things sooner rather than later, and there's no time like the present. For too long, the presidency has been mired in political attachments, lobbyist concerns, private interests, and the overwhelming desire to pit the common folk against each other while the elites lounge around and do nothing with their lives while talking about big business deals over games of golf. This has even made an appearance in the most recent presidential election. We have no interest in playing this partisan game of driving our constituents against their fellow Americans. We have only an interest in making this country better for everyone. Unlike the presidential candidates of the past, we can say with confidence and honesty that we are, indeed, just like you. We are a small-time rabbit farmer from coastal Oregon who believes in a hard day's work, values the free speech of others, appreciates a good end of the day in front of a couple of Netflix shows, and overall wants the best for our fellow human being. We are no millionaire or billionaire candidate looking to profit off of the pageantry of the presidency. We have no intention of preserving the private interests of the unknown few, and we are not looking to encourage some sort of partisan political battle between the masses. That, we understand all too well, is what the elites have been thriving on for several decades. The rich are the ones that get to take part in the politics while their speeches encourage us down here to fight one another in the streets. Look at yourselves! Look at how eager you are to fight one another, to hate each other. See how excited some of you get at the possibility that we will have a civil war in this country, that countless lives might be hurt or lost due to your eagerness to continue the conflict assigned to you by your perceived ideological leaders. Those self-same leaders who have no intention of ever showering the benefits of their position upon you. We won't say that you should feel ashamed of yourselves, but we should seriously consider, as a country, exactly where that sort of thought process stems from. We are trapped in hopelessness and political apathy, all the while with well-moneyed executives taking advantage of this by furthering their own agendas to the detriment of the rest of us. This is not the time to so eagerly give way to the first charismatic figure that comes along to stroke your egos and give you what you think you want. This is the time to think more seriously about the country within which we want to live. This is the time to consider more carefully how we want our children to grow up how we want our streets to look, and how we want other countries to think about us. Do you want to be ruled by private interests and self-motivated parties that care not for the common people? Or do you want to be led by those much like yourselves which you chose to a time where all of you are at the top of the priority list, where the people are the focus rather than the shadowy political agendas? Maybe to you, this sounds like hollow words coming from yet another figure trying to seize power. Maybe it doesn't matter to you that someone dug themselves out of poverty to attain the presidency, or that they rode into it on a wave of money. Maybe that's not important to you, because you feel like it doesn't matter anyway. Because power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. This is understandable. We get that. So let us abate those fears with a simple sentiment that all of you should be able to easily understand. All our life, we've been scraping by, living under the wills and whims of those without our best interest at heart. When times were good for us, people from outside would come and take those good times away, so that they themselves could have good times for a short period. We grew up in a community that took from others to survive, all thinking that they were doing so to live. But it occurred to us, after many years of homelessness, that these single-minded benefits were all too temporary. Uncertainty swirled around us, constantly leaving us unable to know if tomorrow would be a good day or a bad day. If the windfall that we felt we'd earned would be taken away by those who had not earned it. 
So we aren't looking to make our life better with single-minded determination to hold on to that power. That is no guarantee. That is why we have founded the new Bull Moose. That is why we have stepped forward right now to get ready to take this nation by storm for the next election. At the soonest possible time that we could adopt this hallowed role. Because we are looking for guarantees. You are looking for guarantees. And the numbers are clear. It's a matter of yourself or everyone. Taking care of only yourself, as mentioned before, is no guarantee. It is only a matter of time until those private interests try to take that which improves your well-being. Instead, we are dedicating ourselves now and forever, to improving the lives of everyone. To improving the lives of the left and the right, the Democrats and the Republicans, and everyone else who does not sit within those clean boundaries, just as we do not. We are part of everyone. We are a member of that wonderful number of worthwhile people. Part of you. And the only guarantee that we are personally better off is to guarantee that everyone is better off. So you can trust us when we say that we have your best interest in mind, because your best interests are our best interests. There is no guarantee that our life will improve if your lives don't improve. Some might call it selfishness, but we feel it's enlightened self-interest. A rotten world is rotten for us all, even if the small portion of it has yet to succumb to the worst of that decay. But a rising tide lifts all boats. If we are to make this country great again, it cannot be for the Republicans or Democrats, the far left or the alt-right, the neurodivergent or the neurotypical. It has to be for all of us. It has to be for the greatest number. It has to be for everyone. And the only way we'll make sure that the world is better for everyone is to band together. To resist the cultish mentality of extremism. To abandon the hate we feel for each other over trivial differences and perceived ideological threats. Those things endanger us all. They only serve to pull us apart into fractious warring factions that run their lives based on tribalistic fear and prejudice. An emotional reflex too many of us have been all too eager to embrace over the last several decades. The only thing that we can do to overcome this pulling apart of our nation, this willingness to turn on each other, is to come together and find what it is that we can agree on. We can face those problems alongside one another and, in time, learn to better understand each other's motives and ideas. Despite the fact that we harbor so much animosity for one another, we know little about each other's true thoughts and motivations. We place blame on each other and vocally scream from the rooftops that our perceived ideological opponents are horrible, evil people. And we assign motivations to them that they have never once endorsed or even voiced. And we make up our minds that they are not fellow human beings with thoughts entirely like our own. Reject this! Denounce that sort of disgusting ignorance-based tribalism! Reach across the aisle and shake the hands of those who you would have opposed yesterday and ask them, what is it that you want? Ask them, why do you want what you do? Why do you say what you do? Please explain to me your reasoning. I would love to hear it, so that my own perspective can become more complete. And, as the one being asked, accept that the ones reaching out to you are legitimate in their questions. Accept that they, too, have their reasons. And then learn those reasons. Perhaps with a little more understanding we would find that we are not so different. And then we can move on from this dangerously partisan era where we're so willing to tear each other apart over tiny differences that stand in the way of our common goals. Right now, more than ever, we need to turn away from the partisan tribalism that has become so popular in the last 20 years. And we need to meet each other in the middle. We need to educate ourselves as to what we're actually fighting against. We need to learn everything about what we thought were our enemies so that we can find a way to become friends. We need to face the fact that we are all fellow Americans trying to get by. We need to come together with the power and dedication of a bull moose to bring our country back and fix the great cracks that have revealed themselves as a danger to the very foundations of our fair republic. We need to stand strong and we need to stand together. Vote progressive. Vote bull moose.